There are many things I don't understand in this reality. People being one of them, which is why I like computers. But many PCs are made by people, and that results in baffling decisions, like hiding screws with glued on rubber feet, not testing wireless and Bluetooth range before mass production, and selling pre-builds with one stick of RAM to cripple iGPU performance, because it's for easier future upgrading. And it's definitely not because two sticks cost slightly more than one for the same amount of gigabytes, so we can penny pinch there. No, absolutely not. From the rant, you may have guessed that something is not quite right with the GMK Tech G10 out of the box, and you'd be right. It's actually none of those things I just mentioned. It's something else which is easily fixable? Well, mostly. GMK Tech's G10 is a smaller than average plastic mini PC, and while the top lid creaks in the hands, it's used to open it, so I can forgive its lack of solidity. The rest of the mini, however, is decent. The G10 is a strange one, and comes with AMD's Ryzen 3500U, a CPU we have looked at before. It's old, but it's cheap, and held up well against the current Intel N-series cheapies. In this case, the G10 is $190 US dollars, or around $290 Australian, and comes with 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD, or you can double the storage for more coin. In the box is a 19V 65W power supply using USB-C, a VisiMount, and HDMI cable. For ports, we have a 3.5mm audio jack, and dual USB Type-A 5 gigabit on the front. GMK Tech has thrown in a Realtek Wi-Fi 5 for wireless and Bluetooth. On the back is a USB-C power port only, while next to it is a fully featured 10 gigabit USB-C supporting power delivery and display, and it worked fine when tested with my USB-C monitor. There's a USB 2 Type-A port along with Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, HDMI 2.1, and DisplayPort 1.4. This is another mini PC that's easy to open. Two in a row now. I think that's a record. Underneath you'll find dual M.2 2280 Gen 3 X4 slots, which is usually unheard of at this price. And while Jim Tech has done the right thing and thrown in two sticks of 8GB DDR4-2666, the CPU is limited to just 2400. And that's what it'll be running at. Windows 11 Pro is included and scanned free of rootkits and malware. Ubuntu works fine on this mini PC with the latest version. As mentioned earlier, we have looked at the poorly named WoWi P5 mini PC, which featured the same CPU. So we can see if the G10 performs up to snuff against it. In single core Cinebench, it sure doesn't out of the box, with a score worse than the Intel N150s. After tweaking the BIOS to performance mode, we gain extra points, but it's still behind the WoWi P5. Out of the box, Cinebench multi-core performance is pretty bad, performing similarly to the worst Intel N-series results. In performance mode, the G10 scores much better, but again, behind the WoWi P5 by a significant margin. The P5 here is ahead by 14%. In the wide range of single-core tests by Geekbench, the Ryzen 3500U turns out to be not too great with most Intel cheapies coming out ahead. Geekbench multi-core performance is the worst yet out of the box. Performance mode gives a massive boost, yet it's still behind the P5. H.264 CPU video encoding reveals much of the same. Low performance out of the box, and the bias tweak makes it much more respectable, although again, the P5 is the clear winner. Encoding the same file with AMD's VCE hardware encoder has very average results. The P5 is again significantly ahead. 3 d Mark shows the iGPU to match an Intel N100, which is a bad result for a U-series. Luckily, with a performance mode enabled, we hit a number far above. Still, the P5 did much better again, with a 35% improvement. While on DX12, the P5 has a 22% improvement, with the best scores. Finally, we have Steel Nomad Lite, showing the AMD iGPU beating all of Intel's in either balanced or performance mode. All in all, the performance out of the box is dismal, and I'm not sure why you'd ship it this way. The G10 is only worth using in performance mode at all times. The mini PC can play some esports title at 1080p low decently, 
Although Counter-Strike 2 doesn't fall in this category. That's understandable, since Intel N150s have no chance at all. A simpler game like ADS2 doesn't have an amazing frame rate, but it is better than Intel's N series. Can't say the same for emulation though. There are more frame drops than an N150, with a CPU letting it down. And yes, I tried both Vulkan and DX12, which didn't change things. The code compilation benchmark is a new one, but you can see the difference in performance is huge versus the Paladin Woe 4 we looked at just before this review. Photoshop is another new one for the budget minis, and out of the box performance is low. Same with Adobe Premiere. You'll need to use performance mode and stick to a 1080p project for best results. The included TWSC SSD in this mini isn't the fastest considering it has full Gen 3 bandwidth, but it still beats plenty of others we've tested. Thanks to the heatsink, the NVMe stayed cool even during heavy use. Bluetooth range is average on the G10, and there are no problems with Wi Fi tested at a range of 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Idle Power Draw isn't great with either 3500U mini PCs at 11 watts, while the maximum out of the box matches the Intel N series but has really poor performance. If we enable performance mode, Power Draw shoots up, but it doesn't hit the same maximum as the P5, which explains the benchmarks being lower. Maximum CPU temp is fine around the ADC mark in either mode. Jim Ktex G10 has no problem with fan noise at the default balance mode, but with the power limit increased, it has the same problem as the P5 and becomes one of the loudest budget minis under load. The G10 is one of the smaller minis around, although going by the performance mode results, a larger size would have been better to accommodate a bigger cooler. To enter the BIOS, use the escape key on startup. The main screen has a power limit selection, while advanced has auto power on, CEC support, and more. One final quirk with this Mini is that it needs the AMD embedded 2000 drivers if you happen to install Windows from scratch. The AMD 3500U driver will not install, saying the hardware is unsupported. No idea why that's the case, but thanks to Tim from Team Pandori for letting me know about it. Also, with hardware this old, the drivers are no longer being updated. All in all, the Jim Ktech G10 has decent performance for the dollars when the BIOS is tweaked, although not for emulation. It's cool it comes with dual M.2 2280 Gen 3 X4 slots, which no Intel N series mini has due to lack of PCIe lanes. The G10 features USB C PD support. Although you'll need to sacrifice the proper USB-C port to use it that way. It's also an easy mini PC to open. Unfortunately, performance out of the box is pretty dismal and worse than Intel's N series in many ways. And by changing to performance mode, you get a significant increase in fan noise. The weak single core CPU performance brings down the experience and the GPU drivers are no longer updated. So that's the GM KTEC G10. An interesting mini PC, but ultimately kind of flawed. If you're interested in a GMK Tech N150 mini PC, I've got a review of one right here. Cheers!